Hi everyone, this is Gabby and I'm back for another story. Uh, this one doesn't belong to me. They're, these are not my experiences. This is a story that one of my dear friends shared with me. Then she thought, why not share with you all? So this is kind of a romantic slash funny um, comedy kind of story. I guess you could call it like a rom-com kind of story because um, it involves, you know, her boyfriend at the time and, well, a new romantic partner as well. It, it, actually, it actually could make a really good movie. <laughs> a chick flick. Um, so my friend, uh, when we finished high school, she decided that she wanted to go to Europe and explore. She wasn't really sure if she wanted to study or go to college, go to college or um, work or do some type of uh, internship or volunteering. So she just took off and went to Europe. Uh, for a while, she had been learning French, so she figured the best place would be to go to France. When she gets there, she starts volunteering at a place. I think it was, it was kind of like a hostel where you could work and stay there for free or something like that. So she did that for a while. And during that period, she meets someone that she refers to as perfect. She, was, she had met her friends charming. This guy was from another country uh, in Europe. He was, I think, from Belgium or, yeah, Belgium. And um, so they spoke, he spoke French as well. But, um, you know, he was there just visiting. It's not like he, le uh, he lived there. So he stayed for two weeks. And there, during those two weeks, they were perfect. Everything was perfect, romantic, and everything was just amazing. Mind you, um, my friend is not the type that falls in love. So for her, it was a big deal. She had fallen over heels and she's a person that is naturally anxious. So she started wondering constantly what her <clears throat> relationship would take her to. Um, so two weeks after he leaves, he goes back to Belgium and they start a long term, long distance relationship. And this is where my friend's anxiety starts picking. She started doubting based on her previous relationships. She started doubting and having all kinds of ideas and, um, you know, thinking that maybe he was cheating on her and just overall became very paranoid to the point where she tells me she had to take sleeping pills because she couldn't deal with the stress of having a long distance relationship, especially because she had trust issues. So. After a while, they decide to meet again, and she says, why not? I'm going to go see him. So she decides to book a trip. I think she decided to fly and, you know, surprise him. But in the, in the end, he ended up finding out. So he knew she was going, and he knew all his, her flight information and everything. So this is where everything starts. She decides to go takes, you know, her pl her flight goes to um, her his destination to where he lives. And um, that day he had promised her to pick her up. She didn't know anyone there. She didn't know where to go. So she was pretty much relying on him. Um, so she gets there and she's waiting at the airport for about three, four hours and nothing. And I tell her, weren't you worried that maybe... Okay, maybe you can be late 30 minutes, but after an hour, I would have started freaking out. But she says, no, I just wanted to be patient and not seem desperate. So she's sitting there at the airport for about four hours waiting for him. And this guy never shows up, never shows up, literally. He doesn't show up. He doesn't call her. He doesn't text her, doesn't say what happened. So she's thinking the worst thing, the worst case scenario. So... She waits for a little longer, but since she doesn't know where he is, he's not answering, she doesn't know where to go, she goes to a hotel. And then that night, she keeps calling and texting, this guy is missing. So I guess you could think the worst case scenario could be that he got into an accident or something, but it was really strange because she had seen him cutting active in, in his social accounts. Uh, this was Instagram and Facebook at the time. So she knew he was fine. So he was pretty much avoiding her. So um, she decides to 
spend that day there, you know, the next day, just tour around. And her heart is broken. In fact, I remember when she called me on Skype and we talked about it and she was freaking out. Her anxiety was peaking and I wish I could have been there for her, but she took it like a champ. She, you know, I watched her in her hotel room, you know, have a panic attack and cry her ass off and, and just become so sad and desperate. And it was really hard to see her go through that. But the story doesn't end there. You know, she decides that she's going to make the best of her trip. She had never been to Belgium, so she decides to wake up the next morning and at least tour around and go around and see what is there to see in Belgium. While she's doing this, she goes to a main plaza and goes into a church. She goes to the museum and just like she's in, in an area where everybody is a tourist. And she sits there and is eating ice cream. And all of a sudden, next to her, in her, the same bench, a guy sits and just starts chatting with her. She didn't know uh, this, but later he would become her now boyfriend. So they connected really well. They became friends. They shared accounts, personal info. And this guy happened to be from France. So it was perfect, you know. They actually and spend the next two, three days, uh, she tells me, just turning around and getting to know each other. And then they go back to France and continue seeing each other there in France. And till this day, they're together and they're waiting for a kid and everything. So even though this story has a really sad part, which I probably, I should probably tell it in a more sad way. I just know how it ends, so that's why I'm very happy. But at the moment, at the time, I saw my friend completely destroyed. You know, when you experience heartbreak, when you get ghosted. Ghost an anxious person and you'll unleash hell. She went through four different types of hell that night. And she didn't know what to do. She sent him emails, calls. Why are you avoiding me? What's wrong? I'm here. I can't believe you left me by myself in a foreign country. And the guy never replied. And then later on, months later, he sent her a silly email saying how sorry he is that he had been seeing someone. He actually was in a really long term relationship there in Belgium and he just couldn't end it. And so he just never broke up with my friend, nor did he tell her that he was previously committed. So uh, by the time he reached out to her, she was completely over him. She had forgotten about him. She left everything, every feeling, every tear in Belgium <laughs> and, and never looked back. And so I guess from my perspective, the moral of the story is sometimes when you lose someone you think you love or, you know, you're going through a breakup and you think it's never going to get better. Or in this case, you get ghosted, which is the most horrible thing to do to a person, especially to a person that has anxiety and, you know, panic attacks. I think the worst, I think, you know, it's, it's really hard. Honestly, in my, from my perspective, you know, it feels like the end is, the world is going to end. And I think I've been in that position a couple of times, but you just have to breathe and know that even though it seems like the world is not going to be pretty for the next few months, it'll get better. And I know my friend's story is kind of random. I mean, it doesn't happen to everyone that you meet your significant other after a big go uh, breakup, bad breakup or a ghosting kind of situation. And especially at, you know, at a perfect place uh, in the perfect situation that she was in. But, um, but I'm sure that eventually with time, the perfect one comes for you. So you just have to breathe in and go day by day and just take it easy and know that it's going to get better. So there you go. That's another story for you. I'll be back for more next time. Bye-bye.